In every person's life, there comes a day. A day of reckoning where they must push the boundaries of what humanity thought was possible, regardless of the suffering they must endure. And today is that day for me. And Lexar, I guess. Lexar is also here. They sponsored this video. In case it wasn't clear from the intro, in today's video I'm gonna use some Lexar memory and other things that are significantly less important Hashtag sponsored by Lexar to try and reach over 9,000 frames per second in a video game. Is it possible? I don't know. Is there any point? Absolutely not. But in today's video, it, it may happen. <laughs> I don't know, it may. Let's see. Now before we scour the entirety of Steam to find a game engine capable of over 9,000, we need to meet the hardware I'm gonna use. Here are the three corners that make up the triangle of power that we're going to use. Starting off with the CPU, I got an AMD Ryzen 9 7950X3D. Which is just one of the fastest gaming CPUs in the world, no big deal. Now I did want to buy a 7800X3D instead, which I think may even be a smidgen faster than this, but I couldn't find any stock so I had to buy this one instead. What can you do? Of course, in terms of graphics card, I had no choice but to use the monolithic RTX 4090. Now in all fairness, when it comes to just balls to the wall frame rate, the graphics card's probably not going to be the main bottleneck. I think the CPU is a lot more important. But I hear you say, David, I don't care about these two corners of the triangle of power. They're basically irrelevant. Tell me more about the fancy new Lexar memory you're using. Hashtag sponsored by Lexar. I'm gonna be using Lexar's new Ares RGB DDR5. This 32 gig kit clocks to a blistering 6,000 megahertz. Without the supreme Lexar bandwidth, the other two corners of the triangle of power will crumble. And this is the system that's gonna house the triangle of power. So let's get into it. First, I need to upgrade the power supply to something that can handle all the beef. And this 1200 watt unit FSP sent over seems like just the right amount of overkill. Oh, that power supply is the size of a dwarf planet. Look at that. Ooh, I really like this gunmetal paint finish. Despite it being a 1200 watt power supply, they opted for this little loser on off button. Although, having said that, Oh, that is a lovely switch. Oh. oh, no, I just realized there's some RAM from a different brand in here. We're just gonna have to cover that up real quick and replace it with some Lexar. Oh, that does look like RAM made by Ares himself. And it lights up. Oh, that's much better. Disaster averted. I also decided to replace the 240mm AIO with a 360mm one just for a little bit more temperature headroom, which only involved some medium struggle. Ha, don't you do that. I also want to drop in one of Lexar's new NM800 Pro super fast NVMe drives. And just like that, the system was ready for glory. Now we're starting off with Battlefield 5, not because I think we can get 9, ta oh, tank. Not because I think we can get over 9,000 frames per second in it. I'm just curious to see what kind of frame rate we can get. Currently, we're running a 1080p high settings and uh, with the frame cap on, which is kind of set up by default, you can see the system is not doing much at ultra settings. And with the frame rate uncapped and the settings dropped to low, we're not getting much more than 300 frames per second, and that's with the system not doing much. So I'm guessing this is a bit of a game engine limit. 
which I think may become a, a theme <laughs> over the course of this video, but we'll see. Interestingly, switching over to DirectX 11 actually gives us a higher frame rate peak and more GPU utilization. Although we're still light years off from our 9,000 frame per second goal, so I think we need a new game. Wow, CSGO is not doing as well as I was expecting at 1080p low. This is a bot match, but still. Only 380 frames per second, what is this trash frame rate? So I decided to try out CSGO's built-in benchmark, which I'd say helped a bit. In the built-in benchmark room, we're getting 1,400 frames per second. It may be benchmark as opposed to actual gameplay performance, but still, there's gaming happening and we're over 1,500 here. If we look into the corner here, we can get up to 1,750 frames per second. And on this 240 hertz monitor, you can really feel the 1,700 frames per second. Dropping the resolution to 720p helped a bit, but I still need so much more. My solution was to make the smallest possible custom map for CSGO with a wall texture so basic even Quake 1 would embarrass it at a urinal. But the initial impressions of my masterpiece was disappointing. It's still giving us a mo what? After a quick Google, it turns out CSGO also has a frame rate cap which you can disable using the console. Oh yes, 2100 frames per second. Uh, we're still very much shy of 9,000, but that's pretty good. Either way, we need a new game. Briefly moving away from the Source engine, I decided to try out Doom Eternal, which usually is a beast when it comes to super high frame rates. Just look at that menu FPS. At 1080p low settings, we are getting about 500 frames per second. Again, you can really tell on this monitor. And after playing around with the settings didn't yield significantly more performance, I decided to find a more basic game environment. Now I found a tutorial map which has much less going on. And in fact, if you like look up at the darkness, uh, you, you get quite a high frame rate. Although, granted, this is at 720p with DLSS on performance, I guess the next step is to reduce the resolution scale. Whoa, even with the lowest settings possible, we are getting much less frame rate than we did with CSGO. After this slight disappointment, I tried a couple other games, including Doom 1, which topped out at about 200 frames per second, Rainbow Six Siege, which gave us over a thousand frames per second at 720p low, and I even tried Unreal Tournament Game of the Year Edition. I'm so glad I have this two terabyte Lexar drive in here. I can install Unreal Tournament Game of the Year Edition. Seven million times? I guess that's, that's the math there. A few moments later. Okay, well that just keeps crashing when I try and launch it. Even Quake 2 RTX with the RTX renderer off capped out at a thousand frames per second. So with CSGO still being the champion, I guess we need to go back to the Source engine, but just try a much older game. I think Half-Life 2 is a good bet. Uh, here it's running at 1080p high settings with VSync off, and as you can tell, we have an FPS cap of 300 frames per second. Again, it's clearly not due to the hardware because I don't think the RTX 4090 even realizes a game is happening. FPS max, zero. Oh, there we go. <laughs> the game is like running in super speed. What the hell is going on? Oh no, look at that, <laughs> look at the running. <laughs> I then dropped all the settings and the resolution to the lowest they'd go. Damn, it still isn't repeating that initial spike of over 3,400 frames per second. It's so funny how everything's like sped up. Look at how... <laughs> so despite finding a new frame rate champion, we still have quite a way to go to make our goal of over 9,000 frames per second. And after a quick Google, something that a bunch of you have probably been shouting at the screen for a while now became clear. I need to try Minecraft. Holy crap, with Minecraft running at fast settings, just by uncapping the frame rate, we're getting over a thousand frames per second. And we haven't even started screwing around with stuff yet. I'm real glad we have that Lexar memory in here. The first step to get more performance was just to drop all the settings I could find. Oh yes, there we go. Okay, so we're at 1,700 frames per second. Feels so very smooth. Okay, so if I drop the resolution 
to 640 by 480. Let's see what that does. It's actually not netted us that much more frame rate, although we are getting close to that 2000 frame per second point. I've switched over to creative mode so I could fly around and stuff, which has given us a bit more frame rate. But let me fly higher so the land doesn't render anymore and see. The crazy part for me about this is that the CPU is still barely doing anything, but I guess that's because this is like an 8,000 core CPU. And despite that, still not better than Half-Life yet. I then tried out OptiFine, which unfortunately didn't help the performance much. But in my disappointment, I found a video that said the best version of Minecraft for super high frame rates is some alpha build older than the universe itself, which did help. So I think how this works is you just fall off the side and eventually lots of frame rate happens. Wow, yeah, that is a lot. Obviously the fact that nothing's being rendered helps, but <laughs> and that is, that's a big number. But still nowhere near 9,000 frames per second. And after spending a while playing around with memory and CPU boost frequencies not helping the performance much, I decided for no particular reason that the motherboard and CPU weren't playing together nice, and considering that I didn't have another x67 board lying around, I decided to try Intel instead. Luckily, I did have a 13900KF line around. Whoa, even with OptiFine, that's made a massive difference. Look at that. And when you minimize your HUD, it, it's even bigger. We've got almost 5,000 frames per second. Although as impressive as that is, it's still not 9,000. Switching to over the edge of oblivion in alpha, we're getting almost 7,000 frames per second now but it still wasn't enough. So I turned off all the efficiency cores on the CPU and started overclocking. Oh, over 8,000, we're getting so close. Setting aside the fact we've got six gigahertz happening here, we are within spinning distance of our goal. But unfortunately, the CPU had no more left to give. No matter what I did, I just couldn't get a higher frequency to boot. It seemed like I had tripped right in front of the finish line and shattered both my kneecaps. But then, for no particular reason, I decided to, instead of MSI Afterburner, try Fraps as a performance overlay. Wait, what the hell? I'm not even in the depths of Minecraft despair, and we've maxed out the frame rate counter at 999. Wait, Fraps has to be reporting it wrong. Let me quickly get MSI Afterburner back up. Look, it's, it was MSI Afterburner's fault. When you switch it on, it briefly shows 10,000 frames per second, and then it, it drops down to what it was before. It was because of MSI Afterburner, we've done it! Using Fraps, I could even get over 9,000 frames per second in Optifine actually rendering things. So on my day of reckoning, I was victorious. All thanks to Lexar Memory. Hashtag sponsored by Lexar. <laughs> and until the next video, bye bye.